On April 17, 2018, our next guest safely landed Southwest Airlines Flight 1380 after an engine exploded and tore away a section of the airplane. She is now sharing this incredible story in her new book, Nerves of Steel, and that is not an understatement. No, exactly. Please welcome to our home our national hero, Tammy Jo Schultz. Welcome. Honestly, we are so in awe of what you did that day. I mean, that is incredible, and it certainly does take nerves of steel. But this day started just like any other day at work. You were on a routine flight from New Jersey to Dallas, and mm -hmm. then 20 minutes in, you heard a crazy explosion that mm -hmm. literally shook the plane. Tell us what happened. Well, and I do want to point out that even though I was the captain of that flight, I had an incredible crew. And so nobody, rarely does someone do something all by themselves. Yeah, and, that's true. and I wasn't. I had a, a great crew. But we were, we were passing 32,000 feet from LaGuardia headed to Dallas. And we had such a violent hit, we thought we'd been hit by another aircraft. It just felt like a Mack truck wow. T-boned us. And there was a sound of an explosion as the number one engine kind of tore itself apart. And and then it also kind of peeled back the cowling covering and but remained attached like a banana peeling. And so that flailing and 500 mile an hour wind created a shudder that once we got the wings level, uh, we weren't able to focus our eyes on anything because of the shuddering. And there was smoke pulled into the cockpit from the explosion. And also uh, we realized after the, noticing a pain stabbing in our ears that we weren't breathing either. So the rapid depressurization caused from the window blowing out uh, had, had pulled all the air out of the, the aircraft and our lungs. So that, I have to say, that is a very isolating moment and adrenaline kicks in and um, it, it can make you think at warp speed in a very tiny slice of time. And I didn't really think everything would stay on the aircraft. Mm. Uh, as long as it took us to get it right. down to a runway. And I, mentally running to that cliff of what if, I thought, well, then it may be the day that I meet my maker. And, and that's when I really stopped short and had a calm come over me just because I realized I wouldn't be meeting a stranger. I do meet with him every day. So I, I backed away from that mental cliff and realized, okay, that's the bad news. The good news is we're still flying. And uh, Darren and I, Went on, put our oxygen masks on. Here's your co-pilot. Um, Darren yeah. Elliser, my yeah. first officer, right. and headed down. Uh, you mentioned already uh, how you couldn't have done this without your incredible crew. Yes. Um, uh, tell us a little bit about how your crew really assisted you in getting that safe landing. Right. Well, first of all, just having uh, flight attendants, Shanique Mallory, uh, Rachel Fernheimer, and Catherine Sandoval. Yep that even before we took off, we could tell they were invested in people. They, they were um, above and beyond the book, as we would say. And so whenever this happened, and they were buckled up initially, of course, um, they unbuckled when they heard my PA saying that we're not going down, we're going into Philly. They unbuckled and started down a rough aisle. It was complete, it was so rough that they had bruised ribs strained back, cuts and lacerations from going through the aircraft and assisting people. And they even landed, uh, having given up their seats, their jump seats, to the passengers in the row that had lost the window. So they landed standing up and sitting down in the aisle. Oh, my God. I know. Oof. How long did it actually take from the time of the explosion to get the plane down on the ground? 20 minutes. Wow. So. And the fact that you were able to keep it together, like Cameron said, it, in seconds and to stay calm. And honestly, it's a testament to how trained you were as a mm -hmm. pilot. And a lot of that goes back to your training as a, a Navy pilot is, hmm. is where you started. And that's where you met your wonderful husband who happens yes. to be here with you today. You talk a lot yes. about that in the book as well. But you say, you know what? You almost didn't make it into the Navy because you were... I'm going to say this, because you were a woman? I'm confused by that. What to happened? quote, because I was a girl. <laughs> wow. Well, I mean, truthfully, you have to think back. This was in mid-80s, 
And so there weren't that many women flying in the military. The Navy had opened up in the 70s to women. I didn't realize that. And I don't know if the, the recruiters at the time just didn't want to want to take my application, but the Air Force turned me down three times and finally asked me if I had a brother that was interested. They were tired of talking to Can me. Can you imagine? I just can't. But I then can't. The, Navy, or the Army said that I wasn't a fit. And the Navy, even though they let me take the test, which is something none of the others would even let me make an application, but even after I took the test in the Navy, it took me two more years to find a recruiter that would process my application. So. And your test scores were much higher than the men's. Well, he said I scored <laughs> high enough for a guy, but not for a girl. But then when, when somebody <laughs> actually took a second look at it, he told you that your marks were, were well, actually great. incredibly high. Yeah. Well, he said they were great. I just need to come in and fill out my application. You know what's amazing hearing this is, is your persistence, is the right. fact that you kept at it and you didn't mm -hmm. give up. And now look at you. I mean. And, and thankfully for that training, you were able to save 148 lives. Exactly right. True. Exactly right. Yeah, um, right. And you attribute part of your nerves of steel. Uh, growing up on a ranch with hardworking parents. So how did that experience help you? And also, how to talk a little bit about how your parents really supported your dreams. You know, growing up on a ranch, uh, work needs a workforce. So there wasn't any differentiation between uh, guys and girls uh, growing up. I had the same assignments as my brothers mm. and the same accolades when I uh, accomplished them. So it wasn't until I left home that I realized there was two different paths to be taken by men and women in in that area. So I really came into uh, adult life with blinders on. And and so my dad and mom, while they didn't they didn't cheer me on in everything that I wanted to do. In fact, my mom had just sat me down and said, "I know you want to be a racehorse jockey, but you're too tall. Hmm. Drop it." <laughs> <laughs> and so, you know, she was kind enough to s tell me the truth and yeah. and and they never did tell me you can do anything you want to do right. because they said that will ring hollow. There are some things you're just not made for. And that saved me a lot of time in life, just looking at what's my skill set. I may not have the tool set yet, but what's my mm -hmm. skill set? And then just staying focused. And, and honestly, uh, having come to Christ before I went into high school really gave me this stable platform that my what I did in life did not define my my worth. So, you know, I was willing to step out and try new things. Right. And when I I was, um, you know, rebuffed for trying, I would sit back and look at it and think, do I have the right motive in trying this? And do I have the merit? Do I have the skill set to do this? And if I did, then I just went to bed and tried again the next day. Maybe well, we I'll could... tell you what, that was no accident. That was the fact that you kept on and kept on was God telling you, you need to get this training because someday <laughs> it's going to be tested. I mean, and it was. It was. It was. And, and You're lives right. were saved. You so are an beautiful. extraordinary human being and oh. an exceptional person. And thank you so much for being here, for sharing oh, your yeah, story. Thank you. Wow. Thank you. Nerves of Steel is available wherever books are sold. And you can get more information at hallmarkchannel.com. And to learn more about this exceptional woman, Tammy Jo, you can go to her website. Absolutely.